Can, can you tell me a little bit about the healthcare experiences you've had? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for the doctors that, you know, treated me way back in, um, in 1980. Yeah. Um, and onwards, I got the all clear from my cancer when I was 10. So I was kind of, you know, in and out of hospital for the first 10 years of my life. Um, around the time that, in fact, in the waiting room of Princess Margaret Hospital in Perth, uh, when, I, when my parents, like, I'd just been diagnosed. Um, I was born with cancer, but it was diagnosed at three. Uh, that was around the time that uh, the... I'll say Agent Orange, but what I mean when I say Agent Orange is dioxin. Yeah. Um, uh, the chemicals that were sprayed all over Vietnam. That was sort of hitting hitting the press. Um, a lot of Vietnam veterans were coming in going, I've got this condition, I've got that condition, my child's been born without feet with or cleft lips or spina bifida and this is happening to all of my mates, what's going on? And at the same time that was in the paper, my dad and mum were reading it in a waiting room going, and our daughter's just been diagnosed with renal cancer. Yeah. And we were seeing a lot of those kids come through as well, kids whose families had been, whose dads had been in Vietnam with the same cancer that I had. Yeah. Um, and so obviously that made my parents ask questions. My parents, my dad builds roads for a living and my mum's a school teacher. Yeah. They weren't au fait with the whole medical profession and they were, they were told by a doctor, um, Yes, we think, think there's a link, but, but we're not allowed to talk about it. We yeah. can't get any inf information on this. And so they just set about getting better. Um, and, 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 you know, it, that, of course, every time we went in over the years, we'd ask that. But the more we went in, the less and less and less doctors kind of knew or even cared. We were just happy that I got better. Yeah. Until I hit around the age of 19 when I found out that the cancer that I'd had had probably taken away my ability to have children. Yeah. Then I started getting a bit angry and well, going, oh, hang on, you know, how did I get this in the first place? You know, I understand that cancer happens, but there is this sort of white elephant in the room that I heard about that I want to know more about. And so I set about doing my own research. And that was when I got struck by this second wave of doctors, you know, 20 years later that and I'm still dealing with that are younger and energised, but they don't know what the hell I'm talking about when I walk in and say, I was an age, I was an Agent Orange baby. Yeah. I was a child of the mist. Is what yeah. when I say dioxin, they go, oh, oh, oh. the best I can do is DDT yeah. kind of area, and no, they, and a lot of them I think, yeah. Especially when I couple that with I'm also an actress and a playwright, and they think I'm some sort of dramatic being but I'm not I'm very boring and I just want to work out especially as my health problems are getting increasingly worse as I get older um, I, I want to be able to go into a doctor and say what do I do what what what's our fight and and the, as a, because I'm an ambassador for Agent Orange Justice now we're inundated with phone calls and messages and emails from now the grandchildren, great-grandchildren of Vietnam veterans from around the world who go, I've got this condition. Do you know anything about this? We can't tell them medically what they what they can do because we we don't know. It's been, you know, it's been a long fight. And even my cancer was even not considered an Agent Orange um, related disease until I did Australian Story and then it seriously appeared on the DVA, DVA website. So it, it's a long, long, hard fight. The strangest yeah. thing I have to find, I have, I have to say, is that I go to Vietnam fairly often to work with doctors over there in uh, to do to do hospital, which is where the the biggest um, children of the mist ward is, and uh, and they they think our doctors know everything, and they they're always saying they're not giving us information. Why don't your doctors give us information? And they do not believe me when I say they don't know. They're not working it out. They're not doing the. You know, they're not prodding and poking. And it's very, it's devastating to go to Vietnam where, they're, uh, where their situation is far worse than ours and not be able to tell them that we're working for them. Yeah. I had this amazing thing happen on a, on a boat in Vietnam, of all things, where I, I was sitting next to this um, woman um, at a table um, on our, you know, lovely... Long Bay kind of cruise yeah. <laughs> that I was taking after kind of being in the throes of Agent Orange wards for the past two weeks. And I we went on this little tour and 
this woman next to me started crying at the table and she was an American tourist and and she was reading these letters. Um, <laughs> she was reading these letters at the table and I, both our respective partners had kind of gone to the bathroom and I reached across to her and I said, I'm sorry, are you okay? And she said, oh, you know, my dad, I, she goes, I'm so sorry, but my dad fought in this war called, called Vietnam, the Vietnam War, and now we're here, and these are his letters. And, and she told me that she, um, he died recently of leukemia <laughs> and, um, and that she wanted to burn the letters. He wanted her to burn the letters and scatter them in Vietnam. So that's what she was there to do. And we got talking, and she told me about, how when she was born, she nearly died. She had this um, terrible heart condition that, um, which was, which was a con it was a heart condition that was so common in Vietnam veterans' children. She had no idea. She had no idea of that. She had no idea. Her father's last words were, "The orange got me," and she never knew what that meant. Wow. And so I had this trip with this woman, and she's an American tourist. She didn't even know that Australians had fought in Vietnam. So I educated on that. So that's, that's just an example of that's an American child that went to that, let alone, you know, our stoic little we won't ask any questions Australian society. Um, you know, who knows how many people are out there. But I've heard it on late night radio, people ringing up going, my grandchild's been born with a club foot and a cleft lip, my dad was in, well, I was in Vietnam, could it have something to do with that? No one, no one can give them the answers because no doctors know about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's your dad doing? He's all right. He's had a rough few years. He's had a stroke. He's got severe PTSD. My dad was a 10-pound palm, as you would have seen, when he, and he got denied Australian citizenship when he got back. So um, a lot of the PTSD, I think, comes from the treatment um, as well as the experience of the training, then being in Vietnam, then coming back and having a child born with cancer, then having no one being able to ask the question. There's a lot of guilt that goes into that. But he's he's doing really well. He's had cancer. He's had throat cancer. He's just gotten through throat cancer, but I think that's more from the smoking than from any to with Agent Orange, even though the question has been raised. But that's the also, also the important thing is is making sure that that we don't have that we don't go in there and go, I've got cancer and my dad was in Vietnam. It's not, it's not like that and I think that's what people are scared of. It's, there are very specific illnesses that we are being born with we are, and our, our children are and our grandchildren are that we need to have a, some sort of answer. Um, and it's not about chasing Monsanto, although we'd like to, or anything like that. It's, not a, it's, it's about our own health and our own, our own security. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that as you're getting older, obviously things get harder. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to to healthcare you may need. How mm -hmm. do you how do you set that up in the best way you can to get the best care you can? Given that there is this not so much well silence, but also ignorance about about what's going on. How do you set yourself up for the next twenty years? Say. Um, there is one late effects clinic around me. There's yeah, two in Australia that I know of. Uh, late effects for cancer, not for Agent Orange. Yeah. Not dioxin. Um, and uh, I, I'm going through that at the moment. After, because the thing about it is, you, you go to enough doctors that don't know, and you stop going. Yeah. And I stopped. Yeah. And I regret that I stopped. Yeah. I had to because I just got so sick of having to explain the Vietnam War. <laughs> You know, when really I just wanted to know, can I have babies? Too late now. That's gone. Uh, you know, the, it's, which is devastating, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I go into a late effects clinic at the children's hospital. I still turn up there. And, um, and they, they are helping as much as I can. And they have shown a fair bit of interest um, in the in the dioxin line of things. But it's, so that's only just happened really in the past eight months. And, and I'm going through all of the, you know, I have, I have other health problems that are more associated with my cancer than directly with the Asian orange, even though the cancer came from the Asian orange. But, um, but yeah, when it comes to can I have children, will my children be born like one of those kids in the jars that I've seen in Vietnam? Will it be born with my kind of cancer? Will it be born with just a cleft lip? 
what, what will I be born perfect? perfect? Well, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's that kind of thing is what you really want to be able to talk to a doctor about, and and I can't. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, and there's um, there's more like me out there, and sure. worldwide. Tell me about the the Agent Orange justice work that you do. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that, that came, came from Australian story. story. Um, yeah. Agent Orange Justice, Justice uh, contacted me and said, you know, um, we'd like you to be our ambassador. And I looked into them, and you know, they were they they they've gone leaps and bounds over the past couple of years. I have to say, because when I first started with them, I was um, kind of it was very much get let's get Monsanto and let, you know that kind of thing. But I had. I guess, I guess with me coming on board, it's turned more into a um, uh, the, the, the people, people that are out there that will contact them and are contacting them that need assistance. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, I couldn't offer much except to say, I'm with you. I, I am part of AOJ, and I and while they can, you know, battle the big battle, I'm here to say, I know I don't have the answers. Go and see your GP, demand answers, um, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Here's some links to American websites that might help you. Um, here's what I do know. Here's the Department of Veterans Affairs constantly shifting and changing protocol on dioxin. Um, so, but, but through them, they, they are associated with um, VAVA, which is kind of Vietnamese Agent Orange victims um, in Vietnam. And so I um, travel with my partner Hamish to uh, Vietnam and Laos actually because we um, we also uh, and our ambassadors for another corporation called MyVac, which is Mine Evacuation and Clearance, which does the mine evacuation in Laos for all the bombs that are still there. So I guess my my role so far at AOJ as ambassador has to been to link these two um, uh, communities. Um, and we go over there and we, you know, just see what MyVac's doing and what VAVA are doing and what AOJ is doing. But a lot of my work in Vietnam involves going to Agent Orange communities, Agent Orange schools, Agent Orange hospitals, Agent Orange orphanages mostly. Because there's, there, there's still something like, I think if my facts are right, up to 300 children born every month, I think, in Vietnam with um, uh, Agent Orange related illnesses because it's in their groundwater system. Um, yeah, it's still there. It's the most insidious chemical. So they're still being born. You go to, two, I mean, this is the graphic stuff, but you go to Two Do Village, and, which is this beautiful orphanage in, in um, Ho Chi Minh, and, and there's bodies in jars, fetuses in jars, there's, there's babies in jars, two-headed babies, um, babies born with their organs on the outside, hundreds of jars. Yeah. Some of them dated last week, you know, that you just go, this is, this is what we're talking about. This is the chemical that we're talking about. And we've got this sort of very um, small, um, relatively small, but important group of people in Australia that need to know about it. But we have a huge Vietnam veteran population here that need to know about it and that um, and they're all still having children as are the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese don't have access to things like ultrasound in, in the villages that were most bombed, that were most sprayed, um, yeah. have access to ultrasounds or even GPs that can say there's something wrong here. And, so and it's, it's, a, it's an absolutely horrific thing to see. But the, the ones that survive are the most extraordinarily beautiful human beings. Um, a lot of them use plastic chairs as prosthetics and um, many of them can't move. That They've got um, hydrocephalitis, so their heads are far too big to even lift. For, the, for their entire lives, they'll never get out of bed. But their spirit and their energy and their joy as children of the mist is the most astounding thing I've ever seen. And that's what I guess gets me angry in Australia is like, you know, we don't have to be afraid of this anymore. We just have to know about it. We just have to embrace what it is, even if it came from a very evil source, and um, and get on with life, just like these children do. Just like these children do, and their doctors do. Their their medical staff are astounding over there. So, and I want our doctors to be the same. I was going to ask you if, if seeing the the kids in Vietnam has changed your outlook on life, but your outlook on life was formed when you were you know yeah. pretty small i mean you've all you've always been a go forward kind of person 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it has its it has its um side effects. All of this, you know. I, I live in, with chronic pain, and I, and that can get pretty debilitating. Um, in fact, this week's been a corker for that one. Um, but I, I, you do see those children, and it absolutely shifts your view of of everything. Um, absolutely everything. The vastness of the illness is just absolutely yeah. stuns me. Um, but they have all been confirmed as, you know, dioxin children. So and their courage and their bravery just makes me come home and go, all right, I'm going to ask more questions and I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wallow, never going to wallow because there's no point to that. And there's no point in being bitter about it either. There's the only thing, the only way forward is just to um, keep demanding answers. <laughs> Um, has the Australian government actually formally acknowledged that there is such a thing as dioxin-related diseases and illnesses? Yes, they have, but only a certain few. Yeah. Um, that, that at this stage, the last time I checked, it was uh, heart disease, spina bifida, hydrocephalitis, cleft lip, and renal disease. Okay. Um, in veterans, there is a link to leukaemia. Um, and I think some forms of uh, skin skin rashes, um, but they certainly haven't looked into uh, things like, um, for example, in the wives, um, severe um, uterine, um, you know, because of the the poison seed. Yeah. Any way we can put it, um, women being exposed within, um, uh, so that the chemical being within women are. Uh, Things like bad UTIs and thrush and things like that that um, that can occur in, in their wives of, of uh, Vietnam veterans. That's the saddest thing is is seeing when you go to Anzac Day marches, seeing our Vietnam veterans get older and less, uh, as we have seen all of the veterans, um, of course. But Vietnam veterans were so ostracised and weren't even allowed to march until 1988 that you kind of go. Oh, what have we done for you? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's your legacy, and and how can we keep fighting? Because you're all disappearing, and and how, yeah, we've got to just keep the the dialogue going. You feel you do feel it quite metaphorically. You feel the dominoes on your back when when you're a child of a Vietnam veteran or the child of anyone who's been hard done by by the government, um, or grandchild or great grandchild. You feel it. You feel the dominoes on your back, and you don't. You kind of want to push them up and, and start your own line, <laughs> positive yeah. line, positive line of dominoes. <laughs> if if you had a, a a room full of medical students in front of you right now, what mm. would you say to them about the way dioxin kids get get treated? And I mean that in the medical sense. What would you say to them if you had the chance? First, I'd ask them if they know what the hell that means. <laughs> yeah. And um and secondly, I'd I'd say. Probably most importantly, actually, is more important than the di the people that come in and say, "I've got this illness, and it's from dioxin." There's going to be a, probably three times as many coming in going, "I've got this unexplained thing happening, and I don't know where it's come from." Yeah. Not to just go, "Okay, well, we'll treat that." Go to the effort of helping them find out where it's come from. It might be just one of those things, but look into that. If they come in with a, a dioxin-related illness, ask them. Did anyone in your family serve in Vietnam? Um, just ask them because that, that's all criteria and it's all kind of statistics that we need and, and that may pave the way for some more answers. But I think a lot of the time, you know, people are coming in going, my child has renal cancer, but no one's asking the question, did your grandfather serve in Vietnam? Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, take the time to ask more questions, um, even if, they don't amount to anything. It's it's better to ask than have have it kind of go into the the kind of bowels of history and not ever get spoken about. To take, obviously, to take a very objective view, but to be very wary of the sources that write about Agent Orange and dioxin on both sides. Yeah. Um, because there's there's very passionate people on on you know the 
anti-Monsanto um, side that, that kind of want to claim every illness to Agent Orange, which isn't necessarily right and, and does us a great hindrance, I think. But there's also the people on, on the uh, Monsanto side or the, the government side that there can be wowsers on both sides, but uh, there are a great deal of us that sit sit where we're supposed to sit and we'd love to invite medical staff to sit with us in that place and have a good dialogue. So thank you so much. And, um, so fine. I hope it helps and I hope that I hope they, they don't see it too much as criticism as a suggestion of um you know because they also I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it weren't for them. Thank God. Thanks Kate. Thanks Kate. Thanks so much. Good luck with it all. Let me know how it goes. Yeah.